Welcome to our webinar on how to work with referral partners. Before we get started, I'm going to take you through a few housekeeping items. Um, this webinar, will, uh, we will be sharing the presentation deck. It will be available for you within two business days and we'll notify you by email when it's available. Also, um, this is a one-way webinar, but on the side of your computer, there's a panel for GoToWebinar, and within that panel, there's a question box. Um, if you have a question for me or for one of our panelists, you can type it in that box, and um, we'll see it and be able to answer it for you. I'm, I am hoping that you will ask a lot of questions. This is, we've got a whole section of the webinar set aside for discussion, and I'm really excited to be joined um, today by three fantastic co-presenters. Um, here we are. You can see me. I'm Katie Roper. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing for Caring.com. And with me today are Anne Kempsel, who is currently the VP of Sales at Bright Oaks Group but was formerly um, the head of partner services for seniorliving.net, which is now, I believe, called ourparents.com. Um, also, Megan Fletcher is here. She is one of my colleagues at caring.com. She's our director of client services. And Lisa Detweiler is the VP of sales and marketing at Concepts and Community Living, and she was formerly in partner services for A Place for Mom. Um, all three of these uh, terrific ladies have extensive experience in the senior housing industry. Um, Lisa started off in skilled nursing, um, then went to work for a place for mom in, on the referral side, and um, has, since she left, been in the assisted living industry. Um, Anne started as a United Airlines account exec, which is a position near and dear to my heart because I spend a lot of time on the United Airlines. Um, she has also been a community salesperson, an RDSM, um, and then head of partner services for seniorliving.net, and she is now um, back in the industry uh, on the assisted living side with Bright Oaks Group. Um, Megan joined Caring.com from uh, Merrill Gardens, and she has also been uh, in sales and sales management with Atria. Um, for those of you who don't know us, um, Caring.com, the host of this webinar, is the largest website for senior uh, resources online. We get about 3 million monthly visitors. They come to our site to read our content, to check out the reviews we have of senior care resources, and also um, we hope to search for assisted living, memory care, in-home care, um, or any other service that they need for the, for our um, to help them with their loved ones. We're also part of Bankrate, a powerful network of websites. They're our corporate parents, and they get about 14 million monthly visitors. Um, so what I'd like to do before we dive into Q&A is give you a quick overview of how internet referral partners work. And it was interesting to me as we were going through the process of um, getting organized for this webinar and, and setting things up, um, we, uh, we discovered that there are actually lots of, um, uh, sorry, there, there are uh, lots of similarities among the three different companies represented here. That's Caring, A Place for Mom, and uh, seniorliving.net. We're actually more similar than we are different, and I think you'll see that. So um, first off, why, why would you want to work with a referral partner? And the answer is there are 10 million, more than 10 million monthly online searches for senior care. Um, most of them start with a directory, or many of them start uh, looking for a directory in research that Caring's done about a third of people who are um, searching for care through Google or one of the other search engines seek out a directory first. And um, we've 
also seen research done by another caring partner that the first company to get face to face with a prospect is five times more likely to win the business. So if a third of people start out with caring.com, the first people who can talk to those folks are the people who are our partners and that gives them a big edge on whether they get that business or not. So in terms of how referral partners work, again, I'm, I know about caring process, but um, it sounds like it's pretty similar across the other partners as well. We all get in unscreened leads, which might come from lots of different sources. Uh, we sort through them, throw away the spam, throw away the job seekers, um, throw away the Medicaid, and the ones that pass that initial screen then go to a call center where we, all three companies on this call have trained advisors who work, who, who sort out um, people who are looking for care services that our partners don't provide. We sort out people who are expecting to pay $1,000 a month for a community. Um, we find out what their situation is, when they expect to move in, what's driving their search. And only once the families are qualified like that do we match them up with communities and send them out to you. So anyone on this call who's getting a referral either from caring.com, from a place for mom, or from seniorliving.net, that family has spoken with uh, uh, an advisor, they've been qualified, they've been vetted, and they've been matched with you. So um, that's a, a good lead. One thing that often comes up when we're working with communities who are partnered with us is you're sending me people who are not financially qualified. So financial qualification is a big part of the assistance that we provide to our partners. Um, the first thing that I'll underscore is for all three referral agencies on this call, it's the partners, that is to say you guys who provide us with the rate information. Um, we took a look recently here at caring.com and saw that a third of our partners have not updated their rates with us in over a year, and that's despite us asking. So since most of you have probably raised your rates in the last year, if you want better financially qualified people, tell us what you've raised them to. Um, the other thing to remember is that families don't always tell us. Sometimes we're talking to an adult child who doesn't really know the entire picture that their parents are dealing with. Sometimes we're talking with someone who says, I'm not going to reveal my, my true financial ability because this way I'll get a better deal. And sometimes we're talking to people who don't really know what they have. So um, many of our more sophisticated partners specifically ask us to send over people who are a little below the starting because they trust their salespeople to be able to look, uh, to dig deep with that family and find the money to be able to afford the services. The other thing, um, this is a statistic that Ann shared with us from seniorliving.net, 75% of families who move in do so at a higher rate compared to what they told the seniorliving.net advisor when they first spoke with them. So, some of those people who at first glance look like they might be financially unqualified may actually turn out to be great prospects for you. So the thing that I want to really underscore uh, through this whole webinar is that when you're working with a referral agency like caring.com or a place for mom or seniorliving.net, you really have two separate audiences who you're marketing to through us, and you want to make sure that you understand how those two audiences think. The first audience is probably the one that you're thinking of, which is the adult children who are looking for care online. Um, that's the picture here on the left. But there's another audience that you may not be thinking about, which is the family advisor with the referral partner. So I'm going to take you now 
through a quick overview of what each of those audiences see. Again, this is caring.com because that's what I know, but it's pretty similar um, both at seniorliving.net and at a place for mom. So here's what the consumer sees when they come to caring.com. Um, the screenshot on the left is the search results that they see. And then this, the, on the right, you'll see an example of a listing. So your job um, and our job to help you is to get your community to look great so that when the person who we're talking to is looking at you online, they say, oh, this looks like a great community. I want to go take a tour. On caring.com, um, it's very important to have lots of good reviews because as you can see, that's a very important factor in people picking out your community. The other thing I'll point out is on this listing you can see a note that says, what makes us special? This is an optional thing. Our partners don't have to provide this for us, but I'll tell you it makes a big difference both for the consumers and also for the family advisors who rely on that what makes us special field um, to convince the families that this is a terrific place and the right fit for them. So the next audience is the advisor. Um, if you're working with caring.com, we strongly encourage you to provide us with lots of information on your community. Um, you can see that this is the advisor screen, and there are notes here that the consumers don't see. So if you want to tell us something, maybe it's something about your um, particular ability to handle challenging medical situations, maybe it's your average rate and not your starting out rate to give us a better idea of realistically what people pay your community. Maybe it's a special selling point that you don't want online. Whatever it is, we can put that in and show it only to the advisors, and that will help them make a better match between the family and the community. And I know that both The Place for Mom and SeniorLiving.net have a similar place where you can communicate directly with those advisors and give them um, you know, special information about things going on at your community. This is also a great place to tell us about um, pricing specials or other promotions that you have. And then finally, here's an example of how the advisors um, communicate as quickly as they can with the community when a family wants information. I strongly encourage you when you're working with a, a referral agency to Pay attention to the notes that we send after we've talked to people. Remember, any leads you get from caring.com, from a place for mom, or from seniorliving.net have already been spoken to by an advisor. So there is gold in here that can really help you with your sales process um, if you take the time to read the notes. The other thing I want to specifically point out is that link on the bottom of the email that says provide feedback for this lead. We all really want feedback, and it will make a huge difference in the people who we send you if you tell us how we're doing. Um, so the best practices after we make a referral, again, read the notes, call or email right away, and when you call or email, make sure that you pay attention to what the family wants. We often talk to people who say, I really don't want a phone call. I'm at work, or my wife gets very upset when the phone rings, or um, we had one situation where the person was actually a, a nighttime worker and slept during the day and said, please don't call me during the day because I'm asleep, and we had communities call that family, and they got very upset. Um, so read the notes, honor the consumer's preference for how they want to get spoken to, and use the name of the advisor. So when you call, say, Judy with a place for mom, or um, Bill with caring.com, or um, you know Rondo with seniorliving.net, or whoever it is, 
they've spent between 20 and 40 minutes on the phone with that family. So the family is going to have some level of connection with that advisor. If you use the advisor's name, you'll be a jump ahead at making a personal connection with that family and they'll be more likely to engage with you. Um, also be sure that you don't just give up after trying once. Lots of busy people don't answer their phones all the time. So try a couple of times, maybe try via phone and email. Remember that everyone we send you is someone who's passed our screening process, so these are real leads. And finally, be sure you give us feedback, whether you're working with Caring or SeniorLiving.net or A Place for Moms, please tell us how we're doing because we all really want to send you the best leads we can. Um, we've covered most of this. One thing, um, this was another really interesting stat that Ann shared with us during our practice run. At SeniorLiving.net, as, as the other referral partners, um, you can tell us when someone we send you is already in your database, and then we stop working uh, that particular family on behalf of that community and leave it to you. But what they found at SeniorLiving.net is that 90% of the people who a community rejected as a duplicate, so already in their database, 90% of those people moved into some different community. So that's a very interesting stat, and maybe uh, uh, Anne will share some more detail on that when, when uh, we talk in just a minute. Um, and you might want to think about a uh, corporate policy that says we're always going to reject duplicate leads from a referral partner. Finally, remember that our advisors are a neutral third party for the families, and that can actually be very helpful in the sales process. Sometimes the families will tell us things that they might not tell your salespeople, and if we find that out, we'll share it with you. So with that, what I'd like to do is open the floor for questions. Um, and let's see, I'm going to start with Lisa. And Lisa, um, I've talked a lot about Caring.com's process for screening leads. I'm hoping you can um, give us just a quick overview of A Place for Mom and anything that they do differently or um, other uh, situations where people can work best with A Place for Mom. Sure. Thanks, Katie. Um, thanks for having me. I. The one thing that, you know, much like you said, it's very similar to um, what the other two uh, folks do, to my knowledge. It's been about four years since I've been there. So as I understand it, um, it you know, they it comes in and is screened um, either by a call center or through the advisor. Um, the one thing that um, I didn't hear mentioned that I understand uh, A Place for Mom does is, um, they get a, a pop-up screen, if you will, when someone goes online and inquires, they will get a pop-up where they can connect to somebody immediately, and that just cuts out a lot of time to, uh, you know, they get that immediate satisfaction, immediate gratification, and then they get put over to uh, an expert advisor in that area um, after a, a short pre-screening is done and um, get immediate assistance that way so that they can get into that process much sooner. Um, Anne, do you have anything to add um, on SeniorLiving.net and how they work leads? Sure, it's very similar um, to what uh, Lisa was just saying in that SeniorLiving.net, which is now our parents, um, has a contact center as well in South Carolina. Um, the contact center there actually started as a contact center for uh, sort of the apartment world and they, they really train their people very, very carefully. So uh, they are actually in training for well over 30 days before they're even allowed to take, um, take a call. But there are two ways, obviously. People call in or they, uh, they email in, and the goal, just like you all should have in a community of being the first to answer that inquiry, that's the goal with SeniorLiving.net, a.k.a. our parents and their contact center. So they do have advisors that are in the in the area. They see a screen very similar 
to what uh, Katie was sharing with caring in that um, when they say what you know what type of a parameter or you know radius they're willing to look it will pop up the partners that are in that area with the description so they're able to really zero in right away um, and know okay this is the budget these are the communities that that need it and they too spend you know a good deal of time on that first you know, uh, discovery that 45, you know, 35, 45 minutes and talking with the family. So I think reading the notes is a very good idea because many times the families um, who are questioned again by the community, it's like, wait a minute, I've already answered all these questions by, you know, a place for mom or by seniorliving.net or by caring.com. Why are you asking them again? So by reading those notes and becoming familiar with the situation, then you're going to come across, um, you know, a lot more in tune and as a much more valued partner to the family uh, that you're really listening to what their circumstances. Awesome. Um, and while we're with you, um, I've talked about some of the things that Caring recommends people do when they work with us. What are a couple of things that, in your experience, were very helpful in for someone who was working with seniorliving.net, now ourparents.com. Absolutely. Um, you know, I had the, the benefit of being able to visit a lot of different uh, companies in the industry and chat with them about what their policies and procedures were with referral sources. And it was amazing how many different policies there were, but more and more, as Katie had mentioned, um, I did a lot of digging in. I'm, I'm a data person. and and I was digging into some of the um, you know, reasons why we were losing move-ins and precisely what she had put on that slide that 90% of the communities, of the families, you know, if a community rejects a, um, a, a prospect, a lead from caring.com or from seniorliving.net because that family has already visited them. Now this is, this is separate from if you've already received it from another referral company uh, because you know you you do have to reject it at that point. Uh, but if they've walked in and they've seen the community, and then a period of time passes, and then the same name comes through Caring.com, let's say, 90% um, of the of those people that a community rejects because oh well they've already visited our community, they move in someplace else. And the first time I saw this and looked at it, I thought, well, this is kind of you know that this can't be right. But as I did more and more and more, I was finding that actually was very accurate. So because of that, um, many of our partners were starting to change their, their policies about referral companies that if a family comes back through the system, through a referral source, even if they have visited the community in the past, unless they have actually put a check down that 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 lead should be accepted by the community because it's much better to pay the referral source that amount than to lose that revenue that you would lose by that person choosing a competitor. Now, um, you know, that was a really difficult decision to come to for a lot of folks, and I know that there are different ways that people are doing that across the board, but I, as the VP of sales for Bright Oaks Group, that's one of our policies that we are considering our referral partners truly partners and we expect the same from them but if that family visited you know let's say a bright oaks of aurora uh, community and a few months later comes back through a referral source that says to me that we did not initially give them what they were looking for and if we had they wouldn't have reached out to a referral source for more help so we need to listen to that. I would rather accept that referral, you know, that referral from them and get the move in than not. Excellent. Thank you, Anne. Um, Lisa, I'm going to ask you the same question. What are the two or three things that a community can do to um, make the most out of their partnership with a place for mom? So what, what can they do to make sure that A Place for Mom is sending them lots of referrals and great referrals? Well, first off, I would completely agree with, agree with Anne, and that was something that um, I would coach my team on as well. Uh, it truly is a partnership, and I encourage 
uh, my team currently to think of it that way. Uh, the advisors are there to help you get move-ins. It only behooves them to send you good referral sources so that it's a win-win situation. I also really encourage my team to reach out on those leads immediately. Um, we know that it, you know the first or second person that is reached and actually gets a tour scheduled um, by a referral source referral is typically the one that is going to win win the business. Um, and then just getting to know your advisors and again truly talking to them about how you guys can best work together and partner with working those referrals. I mean, we we at a community level wait for referrals to come to us or they go out and do outreach, but in a sense, you know, these referrals are coming to us already and they're pre-screened. And so I absolutely encourage my team to get on those immediately if there's anything that doesn't quite jive with what what the community has to offer then to get on that phone and have that conversation with their advisor and again just truly partner with them uh, to make sure that we're providing families with um, the best care and quality services. Hey, could, could I add something um, uh -huh. to that? Um, you know, one of the things that you guys, you know, were seeing in a screen was about the, the you know, the financial uh, ability of families to pay and that that statistic that I shared about 75% of the families that moved in somewhere actually moved in for a higher budget. One of the things that I want, I think people should remember is that when, um, when a family or a senior are giving you their budget, more than not, they are not including the value of their home. They're not including the actual value of any investments that they have. They are just looking at, um, you know, what, what income is coming off of, of that and what income they're getting on a month-to-month -month basis. And I remember, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, one of the family members from one of the first families that I worked with when I joined Sunrise actually said to me, because he was having this discussion with his dad, he said, Dad, you know, you put this money away for a rainy day fund. It's raining <laughs> and it's storming and it's okay to start, um, you know, uh, divesting yourself and, and, and cashing in some of these investments. You're not going to live in the house. Let's go on ahead and sell the house. That will give you a few more years of being able to live you know, in a, in a nice environment. So I think that that is, that's an area of some gentle questioning that can happen to really understand if a family can, um, can afford something and to see what their budget might actually be. All right, great. Um, I'm also now um, going to direct the same question to Megan. Um, she's my colleague here at caring.com. Megan, uh, aside from what I've said, what have I missed in talking to people about how best to get lots of referrals and um, great referrals from caring.com? Um, ways to get lots of referrals and great referrals. Um, you want to make sure that your listing appeals to those prospects. So you want to make sure that you're sharing the updated rates. You want to make sure you're sharing your specials with your referral partners. You also want to make sure that you're sharing your what sets you apart, not your standard features and amenities, but what makes you unique. Maybe it's the setting that you're in. Maybe you have a special service that sets you apart from any other um, other community in your market. Uh, I also recommend checking your reviews. Reviews are important because, especially we've experienced on Caring.com, Families are coming online and they're looking at those reviews and it's influencing their decision making up to 80% as to which communities they want to be connected to. Responding to reviews is important, whether they're negative or positive reviews, because it shows that you're proactive and that you're listening to your families and your future prospects. So you really want to make sure that you're managing you're listening then to be a good partner with your referral partners. Share information because your referral partners are here to support you and they have skin in the game. They want you to be successful with their referrals. If, they're, if you're successful with those referrals, they're successful. So it's a true partnership. So you want to make sure you view it that way. Um, okay, I am going to open the floor for questions and I'm looking at the questions coming in and we're getting a lot of questions in the domain of how do the advisors select a particular community to refer people to. Um, 
and maybe you want to take that question from uh, the standpoint of seniorliving.net. How did your advisors there select one community versus another community? Oh, absolutely. Um, there are uh, you know, a number of questions that obviously we're looking at. The finances, what they're looking for, what it looks like the level of care um, might need to be, um, how far the family is, uh, you know, wanting to travel, um, how far out the, uh, the community should be. And it really is um, sort of a massaging, and this is where the partnership that, uh, you know, has been mentioned over and over again is so important. So once we get that information, the system actually helps to zero in on the partners that are within that area and meet the criteria that the family has has answered. Um, so if it's if it's memory care, then it's not going to show the memory care, and then uh, you know they have the ability to be able to uh, see what is being offered there. However, to kind of you know link back to what Lisa was saying, your relationship with that care advisor and with that um, person that is is working with the family is vitally important to them being able to know more about your community and to refer you. So if you have a good, ref, you know, a good relationship with that person and you respond to them on a regular basis and even within the time frame of a family deciding, it's not just that the, the advisor sends you the lead. When you're finished talking with the, with the family, contact the advisor. Let, her, let him or her know what, has, what, has, uh, what other information that you have found out. Maybe the budget is a little higher. Maybe... You know, it look, really looks like she's more like, as you walked in, she's not assisted living. She's definitely memory care. So that you guys are working together, the more that you all know what the other knows, the easier you're going to have in finding a place for that family and making sure that that place is yours. Because if that advisor knows that you're going to work with them and communicate with them and bring them up to date, they're going to refer to you again. Uh, versus another community that may not respond or uh, doesn't have that back and forth communication with them. Excellent, thanks. Um, Lisa, we've got a question about AL versus IL. So um, sometimes when you're talking to a family, they don't really understand the difference. Can you talk a little bit about how Place for Mom Advisors help people sort that out? Sure, absolutely. It, it um, you know, during the the screening conversation when that lead comes in, the advisor will ask a series of questions and really start to drill down on what their specific needs are, what their lifestyle is like, what sort of hobbies they have, uh, that sort of thing. And then you know, sometimes it's an education process, and so a lot of a lot of the time, that's what advisors spend their time doing is educating the consumer on the differences between IL and AL and then explaining why uh, you know they may call in thinking they're looking for IL when really in fact they need AL and so they'll take them through the process to help them understand the difference between the two and then um, refer as appropriate. All right, thanks. Um, we've there have been a couple of questions, and this, of course, is always something that people ask. Um, how many communities do we refer to? So, um, you know, if a family calls in asking about one, how do we decide to send them to more or fewer, and um, uh, how many do we do in total? And, Anne, you have a really interesting point that you made on our um, on our dry run about seniorliving.net and some of the data that you found about number of communities. Do you want to share that? Sure. Um, you know, it was interesting when, when we first started out, um, when the company was first formed several years ago, uh, the idea was, you know, three or four communities, and, and we found that that, that didn't work. Um, it was, that was too few. What, what we found was that, um, you know, five or six was sort of the the ideal number, because to be honest with you, and believe it or not, at least one of those does not call the family back. Yeah, don't ask me why. I think it's stupid, but that's actually what happened. When we start getting any more than eight, you know, you get to eight, nine, ten communities, consistently what we have found is that the families are overwhelmed. 
There are too many calls from the communities. They shut down and they go someplace completely different than you, you know, you might think that all of the choices would be in those 8 to 12, but they actually find another community. And it, it cuts all of those communities out of it and it cuts the referral source out of it. So I really think, I'm, I'm very passionate about this, that it behooves not only the communities, but also the referral sources to keep the number of communities that they refer the families to, to, you know, five or six. And check back with them and say, okay, which ones of these look good? Why don't you visit these three? Check back with them as soon as they've done the tour and then add more if those three didn't work out. Otherwise, everyone is going to lose out because, and the family is going to be angry. Awesome. Um, Megan, I'm going to ask you the same question. For caring.com, um, how do our advisors decide how many communities to refer the family to? So the way that our advisors decide how many communities to match a family to is really finding out during discovery what the needs are. We also start with a zip code and work, start with a five mile radius within that zip code since most individuals move within that five mile radius. Um, if they want to go outside the five mile radius, it could be because if it's a different market, um, because of the distance we get verbal verification. And we typically refer families to about four or five communities. And then we also go through the check back um, of checking in how were those communities, have you heard from them. And then also we see a value of scheduling tours for those families to see the communities. And what we've identified is that 30% of prospects end up touring four or more communities. Yeah, this is research that Caring is just announcing. Um, I'll put in a plug for our June webinar, which is going to go into a lot more detail about our, our tour survey findings. But when we surveyed people who had searched online for senior care, of the people who took a tour of a community, 30% of them toured four or more communities. Only 17% of them toured just one. Um, so that, again, kind of did Again, just depending on the environment that they're in and um, how many
find being consistent and being creative about you know how you're reaching out to them with various forms of communication, whether it be email or or you know in addition to phone calls or a note or that sort of thing. Just really being consistent because they they call because they have a need, and it's you know it's us, up to us at the community level to help them you know help solve their pain, if you will, and so. Um, as far as mystery shops, um, hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I think the pricing always plays um, plays a role uh, in mystery shopping. You know, a lot of times we don't ask enough questions. We don't, or we don't ask the questions appropriately, and it and, and it can turn people off. So then, you know, we don't dig deep enough, and then sometimes those uh, um, those leads can um, not be treated appropriately because we didn't spend enough time digging into it. Uh, so really doing your due diligence and uh, Megan used the word discovery, which is the word I use all the time. The more that we can really just have a conversation and uh, try to discover as much about them as possible and really strike that rapport, uh, the better off we're going to be. And so that I would say that was one of the biggest things that I uh, would find for mystery shopping purposes. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Um, I'm going to ask Megan the same question. Um, can you talk a little bit about Caring.com's Mystery Shop program and some of the things that we're finding and how we're using it to support partners? Um, the Caring.com Mystery Shop program is really to help support those partners in order to understand what their protocols are for how they treat a referral and how they treat that online lead that's coming in. Um, and we do get asked by partners to conduct such shops um, as part of our service, and it gives them more insight, and it does go up to that home office level, and they just want to understand that, yes, if their protocols that are in place that are making them successful are being used, or if, if maybe they need to make some tweaks, and maybe they need to restructure how they treat um, leads that are coming through, especially online leads. And it's giving them much more insight, and it's also giving us more insight on how they're getting treated because you don't want to just dismiss that person that's coming in online um, and act as though they're, you want to treat it as your virtual lobby. You don't want to treat them as a discount them just because they didn't physically walk in. You have to treat that online lead coming in similar to how you would treat a walk-in coming in. Um, Megan, one other question. Um, uh, how do you get more positive reviews? We, we've talked about how important that is for a Caring.com partner. How, do you have any the best way to get more positive reviews is if you put together an initiative with your residents and your families, great things you can do. For the Caring.com, for our, the reviews we collect, we can always support you by sending you review postcards. You can also use your online, your Caring.com listing link. Um, we've seen successful partners. What they do is they wait till a resident has moved in, and it can be a resident from any referral source or not even from a referral source, has moved into the community. They wait six weeks until that family or the resident has adjusted to the community, and they've gotten acclimated and they're happy and they've made friends. And they'll ask them for a review, and they will generate a more positive review. We've also seen partners that have turned it into more of an activity, and they're educating their residents how to write reviews. Um, to share what, how they feel about the community or when that family member comes down and they stop by your office and they say hi and they take that moment and say, wow, I really wish I would have moved my loved one in here sooner. You guys are fantastic. You're great. You ask them to write a quick review either for Caring.com. If you have a Caring.com postcard, you can give them the postcard and the postage is paid. It's a short paragraph. Or you can share your review listing link. And that way, you are capturing them at that moment, and they're going to be more willing to give that positive review. Great, thanks. Um, there's a, a quick question that I wanted to address, which is um, around home care. I know that both Advisors for a Place for Mom and Advisors for Caring.com, um, if in the course of their conversation discover that home care is a better option for a family or an additional option that they might want to consider. Um, we do refer out 
And does seniorliving.net also make referrals to home care agencies? Um, we were starting a different type of program before I left, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly what direction that took. All right, great. Um, okay, um, we're coming to the end here, and um, before we leave, I want to ask you to just quickly, you've talked about this already, but are there other things, you said you, you accept leads even if they're already in your lead bank, are there other decisions that you've made now that you're um, the head of sales and marketing for a community that are based on things you learned during your time with a referral agency? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, we talked about this during the dry run that we were um, trying to figure out. I think compensation for a sales team is really important. And, um, you know, during the course of my career, I've, I've seen different companies that will not compensate, will not commission someone uh, in a community if, if a referral source was used or, you know, it's a lesser commission. And I really, I highly recommend not doing that because it damages the ability to build that, re that relationship if the, if the uh, salesperson sort of sees it more as, hey, if I accept this person, then I'm not going to get any commission on it. Um, you know, in my experience, the referral, it, it's a different group of activities, sourcing that referral, making sure they're qualified, and then handing it off to a community does not mean that, well, they'll just move right in. The community's work just begins, you know, just as if somebody had walked in the door with maybe a little bit more information, but it's still a very long haul job to get that family to agree. So without going into the details about what we're doing, we're actually um, we're bonusing, uh, we're, we're playing commission on no matter what the source of the lead is, but then we're bonusing our sales team based on the um, sort of the, the concessions we might make, you know, did we reduce the community fee, did we, you know, buy them a TV, was there a referral source used, and if any of those exceed a certain amount of money, then, you know, there's, there's not a bonus, or if it's a portion of what that, uh, that sort of maximum is, then the bonus is, is reduced based on the move-in. So, you know, the, the, the salesperson is still getting a commission on that move-in because they've still done all of the, you know, the work of moving them in and the paperwork and dealing with the family. Um, so I really recommend that um, the communities that are on the call really take a look, if you are not paying a commission on a referral move-in, to take a look again at your policies and procedures because that that I have found in my experience has been more detrimental than, you know, than it really in the long run doesn't save any money, let me put it that way. Awesome, thanks. Um, Lisa, how about you? What, what are some specific things that you're doing now that you're back working for a community that are based on learnings you took away from your time in the place for moms? Well, many of the things that I've learned have, have definitely been mentioned here, and I would absolutely agree with Anne on paying advisors, regardless of where the source came from. I recently just signed up some of our communities with both The Place for Mom and Caring.com, and the question came up, and um, without hesitation, I, you know, because I know of the work that goes into both ends, um, I absolutely felt very strongly about the fact that they get paid. It, I believe in the partnership and, um, it, you know, there's work to be done on both ends. And so definitely, definitely need to pay the advisors, or excuse me, the community managers. Um, yeah, I, I would think that's the biggest thing that really resonates with me. Excellent. Um, and Megan, of the partners you support for caring.com, what are, um, if you could kind of pick out one or two things that you uh, think they're doing very effectively that, that makes them a, a great partner for us, what, what would you say? Out of the ones that are very successful that are great partners, um, you know, what we see as success is the ones that communicate the most with us. And when I say communicate, it's sharing those updated rates, it's sharing those specials, it's sharing if they're building a new community or they made an acquisition and they want to add on a new community onto caring.com. 
and it's really keeping those lines of communication open um, and being there to check in. So that's important and because it is a two-way partnership. And you've got to treat your referral partners that way. And I've done it on the community side and as a regional, and I've done it on now the other side. And you want to keep those lines of communication open because it is, again, a partnership. You don't want to look at it as though, oh, you don't want to say, you know, the community thinks, I, I can't take that referral because I'm going to be penalized. You don't want to look at it that way, and you don't want your team to look at it that way because it's not going to help in the long run. Because that one move-in, if you want to times it by the average stay, and average stay is around 23 months for a senior in a community, you want to look at the bigger picture. And that's how you want to support the referral partner relationship. Anne? Yes? It's Lisa, if I could just, excuse me, Anne, Katie, if I could just <laughs> add one thing to the group. <laughs> um, just uh, in the spirit of this part of the conversation, um, you know, one thing that I used to um, have fun with it, as far as coaching my team is saying, you know, we're Switzerland. We get to be the neutral party in this. And some of the best advisors when I was with A Place for Mom, again, really, um, really took advantage of making, you know, having a great relationship with the folks at the community. And one thing specifically that came to mind is when you are sending those referrals out to X amount of communities, you know, and, and a couple of them jump on on that lead faster than others and really work the lead and you know perhaps they're coming uh, into a roadblock with this particular family that uh, you know advisor they would talk to each other and really you know because that advisor on the referral partner side is neutral they can help talk through some of that um, whatever that barrier is, whatever that roadblock is, and truly, again, there's that word again, partner with you on kind of helping to problem solve so that you can move past that barrier and then take things to the next step. And that was definitely one thing that I saw a lot of top advisors um, do was, as far as partnering with their, with their communities and vice versa. Awesome. All right, so um, just in summary, um, all three of the companies represented on this call have very similar things about them that make partnerships work better. And I think one thing is creating a compelling description of your community, um, providing that information to the referral partners, both descriptions for the consumers to see, and also private notes for the advisors to see. Um, keeping partners up to date, I, I think that has come up in, in virtually every answer to every question. Tell us when you update your prices. Tell us about specials. Tell us about things going on in the community that we can then convey to the families we, we talk to. And finally, when we do refer a family to you, jump on those leads. Um, call in email. Don't just do it once. Um, don't just call, also send an email address, an email um, uh, message. And finally, it's really a best practice to reference the advisor who they've spoken with when the community calls. So thanks everybody for your time. Um, I wanted to mention our next two webinars. Um, the first one is coming up in May, and this one's going to be really exciting. We've got um, the head of industry for senior care from Google, and she is going to be sharing um, what Google knows about senior care searches online. Um, I am definitely going to be taking notes on this one, so um, mark your calendars and watch your email for the invite. Um, then we also mentioned uh, briefly the tour taker survey that caring.com has just completed. We'll be releasing the results of that survey um, over the next couple weeks, and we'll do an in-depth webinar going through our findings on June 11th. So mark your calendars, watch your emails, and um, if you are not regularly getting our emails or you want to be added to the list, go ahead and drop me a note. My email is here, katie at caring.com. Um, if you'd like information on um, working with caring, uh, you can 
contact Vishal Schrock, who's our Director of Sales. You can also contact me, and I'm happy to pass you along to the right person. Um, and uh, with that, I will thank everybody for joining us today. And um, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.